This coat is my achievement of a five-year dream. Way back in the beginning, in more innocent times, when I struggled to figure out how to make a simple shirt go over my head, in the back of my mind, I knew that one day I wanted to be able to make this coat from scratch. Mama, I've done it. But uh, <laughs> Editing corn, hit us with the intro and let me tell this story. I'm going to start off with a quick recap. So, editing corn, let's rewind to four months ago. There's two things I'm most concerned about, and so I want to try making them first. Uh, there's the lapel of the coat, and then the curved sleeves. And what was I attaching these onto? Oh, just a basic t-shirt pattern. <sighs> Lesson number one. The shoulder in the front here is also decent, but then as I turn around, you'll notice whoo, <laughs> there is quite a bit of bunching happening in the back shoulder arm area. And, wow. For the next edition that I make, I need to start with the body, need to get that just right, and then upon that I can build the sleeve and the new collar lapel panels. There is in fact a whole video dedicated to these initial attempts. So, editing corn, share the links in all the spots. A house built on sand, I think is an apt metaphor here. So for the next iteration, I took a step back. I started with the foundation, AKA the body of the coat. I started with the t-shirt again, but evolved it into a coat, inspired by the pattern of my camel coat. I need to create that panel that goes along the side. So I'm gonna cut in about, oh, two-ish. And then uh, add a bit of taper and seam allowance to each one of these. And voila, my basic pattern. Oh, okay, well, <laughs> that came much later because there was many tweaks and edits and additions until I got it to, you know, just right. And what about the collar lapel combo? How did that go? Well, I'm using the same technique here as I did with the linen vacation shirt, because if I compare that lapel to the lapel of a coat, they look basically the same. That's the thing about learning lessons, you know? You, you just gotta go through it, and uh, you don't know what you don't know. After many iterations and evolutions, I finally figured it out, and realized what I came to was exactly what's in the book. But hey, I'm a take the long road kind of guy, you know? With all these trials and tribulations behind me, I finally had my bespoke coat pattern sorted out. Guess what? It's a whole video dedicated to this as well. You know the drill, editing corn. One thing I'm really proud of with this pattern is that I've made it to uniquely fit me. The slopes of the two shoulders are different. The sleeves are different sizes. It'll only fit right just on my body. So naturally, from here, the next step was to make a full proper coat sample. And I'm gonna take a moment here just to, well, appreciate how far I've come, all right? I like the way I'm feeling, can't touch this feeling, I'm in my feelings, bad man me and my feelings, ain't no bag I can taste, when I'm moving nobody can test me, man I really can't flex, them man them I really can't test me, pass me the Hennessy, let me tell you what I see, it is written in the stars what I see. She tell me say her boyfriend why see man I feeling so icy vibes man a bad man you can come me why be and I step in the yard with no ice. there was a puckering issue in the back though uh, by the vent and uh, well future Cornelius is going to deal with this I'm moving on to the final coat and the outside's going to be this really nice 
smooth wool fabric. On the inside, I've got a gorgeous silky satin fabric. So I'm going to add just a little bit of extra seam allowance around the outside to compensate for the fact that extra fabric is needed for the folds and things at the seams. Thicker fabric means chunkier, means more used, bigger pattern pieces, you know? <laughs> All right, we see you curls. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the cutting montage. For those of you that watched the video before this one, the second one, about the patterning, let's, let's resolve that gremlin cliffhanger. All I had to do was just straighten out along the center back here, and then to achieve the taper at the lower back, I just taper in at the sides rather than the middle. Boom, problem solved. <laughs> So these are basically all my pattern pieces. First, the outer shell and then all the lining pieces on the inside. All right, uh, sewing corn, you're up next. Let's put this thing together. I also picked up these tailor hands uh, specifically because of this project. Lay it down first, I put the coat over top, and then I can press out curved seams much nicer. On with the sleeves. This is where the bigger ham comes into play. So I've stuffed it into the sleeve hole. Push everything down and around. Like this, I can press even more intense rounded curves. I'm surprised I waited this long with getting them. Very handy, really like them, and I will be using them regularly moving forward. That's the outside uh, of the coat. There we go. Now I'm just breezing through this project. What could go wrong? A couple minor little tweaks. This wool fabric is considerably more rigid, and so flaws are definitely more visible. For example, this line in the back here was too high up, so that's why I twisted the sleeve a little bit like that. But of course, that throws off the geometry of the armhole and the cap at the top. And so as a result, I'm getting this folding happening in the back here that doesn't look right. In more simpler terms, my sleeve is basically doing this, it's not quite right, you know? So I've created a new pattern piece, and you can see how much further down the line goes on the new one as compared to the old one. I also removed the curvature of that back seam there. Uh, essentially, the sleeve was sort of curving outwards and creating a little bit of a bubble that looked odd. And then on the under pieces, this is the old one again, you can see it's much more on the back of the arm, the straight part, whereas this one has shifted and goes much more under the arm and then up again here. Based on my sample here, seems to be sitting much nicer. And boom, look at that. I am pleased with the result. So a few days worth of work to sort that out. Quite a few frustrations if I'm being fully transparent. But I got it sorted out and I moved on to the lining. There's only gonna be two pockets on this coat and they're right here and same thing on the other side. I want them as high as possible so that my wallet and cell phone sit on my chest rather than sliding down to my rib cage. The one challenge with these vertical pockets though is when I take my phone and slip it in there, it's essentially being held 
just by the seams of the pocket opening. So what I've done is made the pocket go all the way to the end and then stitch it onto the lining. So now it's being held on both sides as opposed to just the one. I made the pockets point up so that the phone will sit here rather than hanging down there. So I just slip it up, sit it down. I've got a button this time around and boom. I also, with this version, put a uh, pleat in the center back just to make a bit more room when I pull my arms forward. Something I forgot to do on the test one. And there we go, that's the lining sorted out. So with the outer shell done, the lining complete, the last thing to make is the collar. Editing corn, why don't you show us where we left off with the pattern pieces for the collar in the last video. I've hacked off the edge, which is what helps the collar sit nice and flat. I also added much more of a round on the edge of the stand and connecting these two pieces together, they fit really nicely into the corner of the front piece where the lapel ends and the collar and stand start. The one challenge that remains is the collar standing up too straight along the back. So I'm going to adjust the stand and curve it, which will help it sit forward ever so slightly. And this principle applies to just about anything. Whenever you need it to curve in at the top, curve the band, the more intense the curve, the more it sits in. I'm gonna use up my old sleeves here. Fabric's still good. Yeah, not good. Ooh. All right, that was considerably more difficult than anticipated. I started off by making it completely out of wool and uh, even at this stage, it became too bulky and thick to be worth moving forward. My machine couldn't handle it. So I made another one where I swapped out the back piece for this thinner cotton twill but I also wanted my lapel to be a little thinner than this sample coat that I made. So about oh, 10 attempts later and a whole day's worth of work, finally figured it out. The biggest challenge was this curve right here. When it's finished, of course, the pattern pieces look something like that, but sewing it, it's always in reverse, which means that these two sharp corners are basically being sewn together, which is nearly impossible. So pro tip that I realized is just cut slashes in this piece here so that it folds open a bit more like that. Now this vent in the back here, um, editing corn, show us the uh, little hiccup that I made on the, uh, the sample jacket. Turns out my lining was too short and that's what was causing that pucker. So I ended up patching in a whole new piece here just so I had enough fabric to hang nicely. So I made the lining about half an inch longer just to make sure there's a little bit of slack there to not repeat that mistake. So I uh, don't think I solved the problem. So um, I think I'm going to use it as a learning experience rather than being upset, you know? I did a mock-up so I could figure out exactly how I need to adjust my pattern. I'm going to patch in a whole new bottom half. 
That piece is fine there, right? Yeah. Essentially, I forgot to account for my seam allowance, so I just went down an extra three quarters, and voila. That is my problem solved. Moving on. This part will never cease to amaze me. Um, I have the lining fully attached to the body of the coat. The sleeves basically become a loop. I've left a little hole here in one of the sleeves and from here, I start pulling the coat through said hole. Come on. Didn't say it was easy though. Turn the sleeves right way around. The coat is a coat. It feels like a magic trick every time. Touch of intrigue with a little shine on these nice smooth flat buttons. All right, editing corn, cue the montage. Let me drink in the fruit of my labors. And don't be shy to linger a little here. I've earned this one. Marketing corn here. Uh, I've made a couple changes over on Patreon, I've had a couple tiers. I've also refocused my personal efforts on growing the community on the Discord server. It's been some good chatter happening over there. If you want to join in on the conversation, might need some help on some projects, check that out. Also, thank you to these uh, top tier supporters. Thank you. And uh, now on to that montage. Oh, and um, you can check out some of the links in the description also, if that's of interest. All right, montage. Serving to my magic side. I was in a magic city, going 50 50. I bet it all up on that red, and they got real shifty. Pity, pity, it's a petty crime. You see how people change their vibe when the screen up on their mind. Kevin fed a lot, but fuck the final. I'm searching for them high notes. I'm slipping in my slippers, playing samples off this vinyl. Getting better every month. I'm obsession with my freshness. This is imperfection, but it's such a perfect.